Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first pencil with Kathy and Mike. My name is Mike the Car Guy. With me, as always, the wicked, wonderful, and always smiling rental horses everywhere, Kathy Cruz. Kathy, see, you're smiling. Yes. Yes. Rental horses everywhere. By the way, I should tell everyone since I have the opportunity, uh, there is a movie a documentary out called Wild Beauty. And it is uh, a documentary on what the Bureau of Land Management is doing to wild horses. And it was uh, produced by a, an advocate and gal who, who lives here and her husband lives here in Los Angeles. And, um, and uh, I couldn't make the premiere because I had to be somewhere. It was on, it was like two weeks ago on a Wednesday night and I couldn't go. But my friend Scott Beckstead was, they had a panel after. Scott Beckstead is an animal rights attorney and a, and a professor at college and also is on, uh, is uh, one of the founders of Animal Wellness Action. And he's also one of the, I would say, top three people that know about wild horses in America. And he's in the movie. Uh, wow. And there's uh, quite a few other advocates in the movie, but other, it's just an illustration of what's happening. So it's called Wild Beauty. You can get it um, uh, pretty much, I think, everywhere. I think Amazon for sure, Amazon Prime. Um, but check it out because it's, it. if you want to know like what your tax dollars are doing, uh, committing horrible atrocities and uh, and also giving up um, our, our rights, even if you're not an animal person, uh, it's uh, public lands that we're talking about. They're public use for public use and um, industry, cattle ranchers and uh, the mining industry, the fracking industry are trying to take over the land. And they have tried to take over it for a long time. So there's it's been fascinating watching through your posts. I've actually learned a lot about how, you know, I, I remember it's probably what four or five years ago when they had that big um, confrontation in Nevada, was it? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I learned, you know, that it's basically cattle ranchers that are letting their cattle graze on public land, mm -hmm. so they don't have to pay for, you know, raising the the, the grass to feed on them. Their own land. They're basically getting free feed. That's right. And then selling the cattle, and yep. and so they're the ones that are like, hey, you need to move these horses out of here, so our cattle can feed for free on public land. And that we don't water, we don't take care, we don't do anything. It was kind of mind blowing when yeah. you really think about it. A lot of cattle ranchers are crazy. also in oil and gas. It's it's kind of together. Why not? <laughs> so the fracking industry also does the same thing. And the way that public land you, works is it's called mixed use. It's like by the federal government they call it mixed use. So in other words, it has to be for everybody. And so they got a loophole, and that's how they were able to get um, like like the government leases certain plots of land of public land to these ranching conglomerates and they pay a minimum price i think it's a dollar 36 for a cow and a baby to graze every month and and cows just by the way also not to go off on too much of a tangent but horses wild horses especially uh they are part of the ecosystem and the way that horses eat they pick off the top of the of the plant or the grass so as it grows and then it, they pick off the top the way that they chew it they don't but but cattle actually take the whole plant with them and so when they've been on a piece of like a plot let's say one of the least plots they leave it completely degraded beyond comprehension and um i won't even go into the water situation but there's so much but everyone should know what their tax dollars are paying for and this movie will help you learn that and join us. Definitely, in. definitely good. Yeah. So, what else is happening? Uh, so what else is happening? Uh, uh, I wanted to share something uh, this week. Uh, I sat in a demo with um, a large auto group on on a, a digital market from a digital marketing provider, a Ooh, large sure. a large digital marketing provider. One I just of pulled the, up my chair. I want to want to get in on this. <laughs> one of uh, the name, which I don't need to say, but I'm sure you can guess if you know large digital automotive digital marketers co companies and. Um, We've talked about, Mike and I have talked about the changes that are happening with regard to privacy. It started with iOS 14, but Google has been working on it 
pretty much. And their ad business is that's what makes Google. And so they've had to restructure how their business is run and what that's going to do with the Chrome experience when you're on Chrome, you saw there, you know, there's going to be some things that we're going to, they're, they're going to change and there's already changes happening, but I think that after listening to this demo and witnessing what, what these people are saying and trying to share with dealers, like selling them on <clears throat> their product <clears throat> is, is, I, I had to like mute myself almost because I just couldn't, um, their their spiel is about 10 years old and 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 where you're a dealer or a manager or someone you don't spend all that your time in this space and so you kind of depend on the dealer to be telling you the truth and i can tell you that is not the case and so they're still relying on the ignorance of exactly the car business yeah. executives because typically yeah. you're busy running your store you're running your sales team you're you know you're doing all the things that it takes to operate a car dealership you can't necessarily spend time learning about and really specializing in the the black magic that is digital and social marketing you know and that's 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 understandable that's why we have these companies to fill that void that you know as a dealer you hope you can find someone that's good at something you're not at pay them to do it on behalf of your store and trust that they're doing a good job because, Hey, they're computer people. They, and digital people, they know they're online, they know what's going on and they know what's coming, but you're saying that they're, no, they do not still know selling. The I, hype no. And the even real. if they know, if they know what's coming, they aren't nimble enough to change. And it's a radical change that's happening. It's and, a big change. And yes, it, I, uh, you know, the part that you mentioned about them not knowing the digital space, it's also just, just peripherally in the news, paying attention to what Google is doing and saying and what they're they're trying to roll out and AI and how that plays into it. I know that's a lot on the news, but the reality is, is there's a lot of massive changes with regard to privacy and advertising and dealers need to know because they are making decisions off of it. And I think it's very uh, disingenuous for a vendor to not alert their clients to this in fact if you do alert your clients they're going to like you even more and they're going to trust you but, but they're going to consider case, you a partner or not partner. just a That's company right. yeah and you're looking out for their best interest i just shared the i was saying earlier um this week google has finally um clarified that you know they've talked about it since 2019 back in 2019 google said okay we understand the privacy laws are changing and people's concerns are legit we're going to move away from the cookies as a tracking um, tool, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to find something to replace it with. We'll mm -hmm. still have, you know, marketing th that'll be tangible to connect the dots on that customer journey. It won't be cookies though. And now this, just this week, they clarified it's going to be January of 2024. So I was just kind of, you know, making a joke out of it. Like February, 2024, all your third party vendors are going to come to the oh, dealership yeah. and go, Hey, as you know, Google took away our ability to measure but based on our expertise, we're pretty sure we put about 54 billion people on your website last month. Yeah, yeah, prove us wrong. You can't, just pay us. <laughs> in fact, I, I will say that in this demo, uh, the person that I was on it with actually asked a question like that about how are you actually going to know? And my, in my experience, this is the person at the dealership, in my experience, what I have seen is it's getting about 20% of of the overall amount of the traffic it's getting about 20 percent like that are really like looking and they're that are participating or part of it and finally got them to admit yes we'll never be able to tell you exactly how much but finally it took quite some time and that was through this dealer is very savvy and they know what's up and they were simply just just to give you the background they were just simply looking at maybe getting a new website vendor. And, um, you know, what's morphed now in these big companies is they want to be all the things. They want to yes. do the website. They want to do the ads. They want to do the social media. They want to do the reputation management. They want to do all of it so that they can keep you like a mushroom, you know, in the dark and feed you shit. <laughs> so, and from um, the dealer standpoint, the dealers are trying to consolidate. They don't like writing 
16 different checks every month and and having multiple vendors you know there's very few vendors that work well with other vendors so you got all these people playing in the sandbox they all hoard their information um i know of a dealer that did something kind of unique a few years ago where he invited all of the the vendors that he works with as far as advertising marketing everything into a, a meeting and he basically said tell me and this group what you do for us as a dealership and how well it's working mm -hmm. and you can see because i was in that room because i consult with them you could see the uncomfortable you know fact they didn't want to share they didn't want to reveal you know they're like hey i'm joe with abc uh you know web co company and and we do this and the the gm of the store was like pressing them okay yeah. more i need more i need more i need to know how you can interact with this guy and these guys and how you guys can share better because right now you know you send me an idea or a, a graphic i have to turn and send it to these but why can't we all do that together if if i'm the end customer and i'm paying all you guys let's all do this and everybody was kind of like oh geez <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to do that <laughs> so from a dealer standpoint i get wanting to pay one company for their website their marketing their paper clicks their reputation management it makes sense but what are you giving up what are you losing and again we talk what's what's my favorite phrase you got to inspect what you expect right yeah i just don't i see a very bad thing happening and the the bottom line is do your due diligence if you do have a partner quote unquote partner vendor uh great you know hopefully they're trustworthy but if they're a large company I can tell you they are not nimble enough. They are not discussing the changes today. And that is a big red flag. Uh, and you should have a good answer for why they're not. And usually it's because they're just, they're too big and they are, they're fat and happy and they're happy to collect your check. And they're right. happy. They don't to have to make changes yet because it's still way off in the distance. Because their clients, their, their client base isn't asking questions and doesn't know and i just as a person that sat in the chair to make those decisions that that concerns me and it's it's um i'm not saying they're shady by by any stretch although there are shady they're shady vendors but um it's just they're not nimble enough uh to when you're doing all of those things let's say you're, you know you've got all of the website and the the ads and the social media and the reputation and all of it they're not nimble enough to change it as quickly as it's changing and that keep is, up with the changes that are coming yeah and just start Not asking just keep questions. up you don't want to be working from behind you want to stay ahead of them and dude a one thing okay so you know i always try to think about like listeners if they're saying okay well what should we do well one thing is just ask questions ask them about the coming changes that google and the chrome uh experience the chrome browser is going to be making and you'll let's see what they say and if you want to educate yourself a little more just you know you can reach out to me of course but um i'm happy to give you some you know good information from um the places that i get mine but but you can you know there's a few places to get that information about it and what's because there's a lot of people talking about it it's a yeah. big and deal there's a lot of people that are talking about it and and using that fear to drive business for themselves, you know. Yes. Ooh, you got to be afraid of this because Google's yeah. going to use artificial intelligence in their their search. So when you type in something, you know, Ford dealer near me, the artificial intelligence is going to kick in and it's going to start looking at all these other aspects, and you need to be aware of it. Now that's great to say, but as a company, right? Because as a dealer, I read that and I go, okay, well maybe I need to hire these people. So when you're talking to them. You need to really be asking them, not just take their word for it, that we're prepared for the changes Google's making. What have you done to prepare? Right. What have you How done? How do you know you are prepared? Because mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to ask you. You should be telling me that these things are coming. And that's not happening. And if they, if it is by your vendor, then keep that vendor because that's awesome. Because there just are like, workarounds, what's happening. You know, they're taking away the third-party cookies. They're doing a lot of changes, but... There are, um, you know, it's Google's main uh, source of income, so it's not going away. They're just going to change things up, and it's going to require a lot of changes from vendors and the things that they, like, they're just their processes are going to have to change. And if they're not discussing it with you or telling you about it, then, then that's, to me, a red flag. So... 
the more things change, the more some, some stay the same. The the pitches that are out there are the same pitches we heard 10, 15, 20 years ago. It's always buyer beware. And, you know, there's a lot of money to be had in, in the automotive space. And uh, unfortunately, that brings in a lot of riffraff. So, and a lot of like, maybe not even that far. I mean, yes, riffraff, but probably more just, oh, I can make some money and we'll create this process and it'll be great. But that's that was, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago. It's much different now. In each and it's one of those much platforms. different in six months. You know, it used to be major changes were two or three years. Yes. And then that that curve got shortened to 12 months. Now, yeah. Like six remember, months the, from now, remember the search be a, um the different. Google, they they would change the um, you know, Google would change to their uh specific, just change up their search uh rollout and it would be, you know, called, you know, whatever it was, penguin panda or whatever. Panda, yeah, and all that. Remember that? Those that was like maybe maybe every two years, every three years. But no, it's partially a lot of it. Well, of course, most of it is competition, but it's pretty good competition from Facebook, certainly. So, um, but they're, you know, the and AI, they're, they're trying, Google's trying, you know, to, and they were kind of caught, you know, sleeping at the wheel a bit. And because they're, you know, when you're the number one, you know, you have to stay on your toes or somebody comes after you. And that's kind of what happened with with um, the first uh, AI situation with Microsoft and Bing, but um, but they're you know they're moving along and Bard is wor- they're they're rolled it out and you know so they're 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 not completely out of the water now. So um, but nonetheless, it's just a, a situation where you've got if it's a large vendor you're working with, and typically those are the ones that are preferred the factory vendor you know people. Um, you gotta just don't take what they give you because it's it's likely not not gonna help you, not gonna serve you well. Some things don't change. No. And that's that's kind of unfortunate. You know, and and that's on both sides of the fence. Yeah. Uh, I'll share with you something that you know I didn't think we'd have to be dealing with again for many years now, but uh, over the weekend, uh, a friend of ours called my wife and and asked, you know, uh, she said, Hey, is Mike with with you so she put her on speakerphone and she was asking for advice she was at a dealership and she didn't they didn't plan on going but you know this is what the car business has relied on for a hundred years right that impulse you just let's just pull in and talk to the guy and you know get get an idea of what's going to happen or what we need or you know let's just see what they have that impulse you know we talk about how educated customers are and you know the digital um process of you know going through the journey but mm-hmm. Still, so much of car sales is just that impulse. Let's go, let's stop in right here and, and see what they have to say. And we, we, you know, we rely on that. We hope for that. Because <laughs> the more educated the customer is, the less opportunity for the dealership to make those big pounders, right? Because those educated customers, they're, they know what they want and they're not going to take any, any BS. So dealers in general, they don't want that guy. They want the guy that just pulls in fresh, and we can, you know, put them through the process. So the reason she was calling me, she goes, look, you know, they appraised our trade in. We can't get our keys back. We're not like going to walk out, but, you know, can they hold our keys? And I'm like, wait a minute. Are you kidding me? Is this a joke call? Are you pranking me? It's 2023. She goes, they said that the used car manager took the keys to go appraise it. He brought the car back. We saw him drive it off. He brought the car back. And now they're saying they can't find him. They've paged him and, and he's, he's not available. And it's five o'clock in the evening on a Saturday. It's a small store. I'm like, okay, just, you know, no, they can't hold your keys. She goes, okay, that's what I thought. I just, you know, we just want to have our keys. We're not going to drive off. So she calls a little bit later. She says, you know, they're, um, they they said that they can't discount the the used car um, because they paid too much for it or something, but they have a new Sentra that's only about a thousand dollars more, but because the interest rates better, the payment's actually lower. Would that be a good deal? I'm like, a good deal is, is not a number. It's a, you know, do you like the car? She goes, well, it has more features. Obviously it has no miles on it. I go, it's got full warranty. So if it makes sense, you know, do what you got to do. She goes, I just wanted to, you know, get your feedback. So then she calls back another, it was like two hours later. I'm thinking she's going to call back to say, Hey, we're driving at home. They're in finance. 
and she stepped outside of the finance office. Mm -hmm. She goes, look, we were going to buy a warranty, you know, the, the longer warranty, you know, and she's using her terms, which I've always said, you know, sometimes we use car lingo yeah. and that can shut off a customer because they don't, they don't speak that language. They're not doing it all day, every day. Right. Yeah. She's like, we were going to buy the protection for longer than the factory warranty. But the guy said, if we didn't, the interest rate's going to go up because the only way that they could give us this low rate was because there's, there's the extra warranty and that makes the bank feel yeah. comfortable that if the car broke, you know, they'll still yeah. get their payment because the, the coverage will cover whatever repairs are needed. Oh, and no, I'm like, no, 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 that's the kind of shit I heard yeah. back in the nineties. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. in my head, I'm like, where did that even come from? Because there's, a good chance this kid wasn't even alive <laughs> mm -hmm. you know this f and i guy he wasn't even born when this kind of stuff was was being taught mm -hmm. where did it come from so i said no that's that's not the case i said you know what hold on so i pull up the dealership turns out i the the gsm in that store i know i've known him for many years i didn't know he was there so i text him i go dude are you at the store and he's like yeah what's up you know, long time no talk. I go, give me a second. So I said, Marla, Mar you know, Marlena, I'm going to call you right back. So I get him on the phone. I go, look, you know, I got a friend that's in there. They, they didn't plan on going out. So I couldn't, you know, help her go places, but it's a good thing. She turned up into your store so you can help me. You know, he's like, totally, totally guy. I got you. So they leave like 20 minutes later, you know? So he calls me back. He goes, Hey man, you should have, you know, told her, to, to let me know that she was your friend. I go, that's my point. I shouldn't have to be in the set, in the conversation. Customers shouldn't have to walk on a lot and go, oh, by the way, I know Mike, the car guy, and he knows you. He said, come here because you'd treat me really great. And, and all I've ever said when I refer someone to somebody is it's not about the money. I don't care how much fucking money you make. Just take care of them. So when I see them at the store, I don't have to hide from them because they had a horrible experience <clears throat> yeah. because a good deal is it's not about the money it never has been it never will be i'm, I'm not telling lion. you to make a profit i want you to make a profit i was in the business for 35 years i made a lot of money but i i always felt good about what i did and my customers came back to see me and they referred me and they talked great things about me online and gave me good reviews so i'm not anti-profit i'm not going to send somebody to another dealership and go hey don't make any money on this guy that's not, the, that's not the point. The point is make the transition from on the lot to finance as easy and smooth without any issues, seamless as possible. I want and you to negotiate. Just I want don't you to lie. Money. Don't fucking lie. And don't be don't, like, right. that's illegal, honestly. Oh yeah. Let's not even get into that. You, you can't just for anybody that's listening, that's not in the car business. You cannot tie the purchase of additional services or coverages or anything to an interest rate at a bank yeah. and to tell a customer i can't get you this low rate if you don't buy these things so if you take that other stuff off i'm gonna have to bump up the interest rate you can't do that no. you just can't and no. if you're in the industry you know you can and if you're doing it please stop that's all please i'm stop. saying <laughs> yeah. yeah because eventually it will it will come back to bite you sooner or later it will and I don't know. That just seems, here's what I think. I think that someone, whoever it was, thought that they were the first one to think about how to do that. They were the first one that had that idea. <laughs> and I can tell you right now, there are F&I people out there. I could name a, a handful of them that have had ankle bracelets from doing shit like that. And that's the thing that, what do they say? If you don't know your history, you're bound to make the same mistakes, right? Yes. So if you get in the car business, you know, educate yourself about the history look at the amount of dealerships that have been closed the the cases that have been you know launched the charges that have been filed the trials the convictions the the loss of income money sales license mm -hmm. you know i mean you name it yeah yeah because also for those that aren't in the car business that are listening you have to have in the state of california you have to have a occupational sales license in order to sell cars and in order to be in finance so if you are, that's how you get actually an ankle bracelet. If you do <laughs> bad things, bad enough, they will come in with their badges and guns and, and do what they do. But um, 
So you uh, are held to a standard, right? And you should probably just abide by that standard because trust me, if you think you're the first one that thought of that, <laughs> I, know, I, I, can, I can hear to tell you that that is not the case. <laughs> and yeah, it just can come to no good. And I don't know, I, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't foster any kind of <clears throat> long-term sales relationships with, with customers either, because that's a, it's a, that is nothing but a lie. And once they find out that it's a lie, that you lied to them, you're just, yeah. you're done. You don't have any way to go after that. They'll never, they'll never do business with you again. And that's complete short-term <clears throat> thinking. You know, I've always looked at things in the long run, right? You know, I want this person to refer me. I want them to come back again. I want them to bring their kids back. You know, those folks that that do believe that and sign and then find out later are never coming back. But if you don't care, if all you care about is today, which I know the car business is an out business, I get that. Mm -hmm. But that's all I, I've said for many years. You, we got to shift that perspective just a little bit and look to the future now, especially more than ever. Yeah. Yeah, because we're coming off of two years of customers getting yeah 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 pounded yep with with additional markups you know with all these things going on and salespeople acting any way they feel like and sales managers acting any way they feel like being very adversarial being very um, hostile honestly to having no wonder no one wants to come buy a car no one out of the last two conferences you know I'm online all day every day and and I'm you know I try to keep my finger on the pulse it seemed like a lot of conversation at both digital dealer and and uh, dmsc it seemed like a lot of conversation on the floor was about the return of professionalism to the car business you know salespeople are going to have to actually be salespeople mm -hmm. moving forward into this summer the yeah. summer sales people summer sales season is going to make or break a lot of people there's going to be a lot of people that jumped in, made a lot of money, and are not going to be able to to sell cars moving forward because they just don't have the skills. All they know is, you know, filling out a a, a sales order. Just they're waiters. Yeah. Oh, we have the only uh, Bronco in Southern California. It's got a twenty thousand dollar markup. You'll take it. Fantastic. Sign here. That's not salesmanship. No, that's order taking. Right. And that's what we've got as a, as a whole crowd of order takers in there. And the ones that want to make this a career and look at it long-term are going to have to learn how to become salespeople real quick. Yeah. Yeah. And that means building your book of business, being, you know, delivering good experience for your customers, no matter what. It's still all that. It's still, there's nothing different. That's all. Always and it's, you know, honestly, it's an exciting time. If I yeah. was in the business right now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother chasing a title. If I could go back and start all over and start today, I would only be a salesperson. Mm -hmm. That's the best job in the house. Because mm -hmm. at five o'clock when my shift's done, I'm out. So yeah. I'm done. <laughs> I don't have to do, I don't have any Believe inventory me. to worry about. I, don't I wouldn't have to, have to be working extra shifts or working my off time or doing a bell to bell because I'd do what I was supposed to do while I was there and I'd be out of there. Because I, I, there's so much, so much power with just basic social media i mean i could build a book of business in six oh, months oh. that it took me three years when i first started to build yeah, yeah. my friend and Dane, i wouldn't take ups i would not be on the line you know calling ups blue sedan come in yeah my friend dean works for a uh a, a organization that allows him to he doesn't he's not technically his own department but he is and they allow him to do that and because he he looks at it like it's his own business and he develops ships and sells has repeat customers that's pretty much <clears throat> all he does he sells Porsches and it's it's pretty good when you do it like that if you've got an organization that will let you but if they won't then you could probably right. still do it anyway but <laughs> um but yeah that's but he looks at it like a long-term um professional you know situation and treating something like a transaction, you know, you are, there is an opportunity that person would buy from you again. And if you don't behave in a way that they are going to want to, then, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to, not going to make it as much as the next guy. Next guy I was too. running a um, Chrysler Jeep store in Riverside long ago. And across the street was a very large um, Toyota store. And they had a guy, Joe, um, that was was one of those legends in the car business and he worked his own hours i mean his customers would call him and typically he'd be on the golf course he'd set up the whole thing he had an assistant the dealership paid for him to have an assistant because he was that good the guy was moving at that time 60 plus cars a month mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that's, you know, that's great now. But back then it was kind of just like one in a million, you know, everybody in the entire auto center knew. And, and he had a very nice car. When he pulled up in front of Toyota, oh, Joe's here, it must be a delivery. He'd be there on the, on the ground an hour, hour and a half, jump in his car, take back off again. And he didn't have a schedule. And the dealership knew this guy is selling 60 cars a month without being here on the lot. So we got him an assistant, you know, she sent out thank you cards, did all the things, coordinated his schedule. And she would just let him know, okay, you got a delivery at 2.30. He'd show up at 2, make sure the car was ready, do everything, have the contracts all ready, get him into the finance office, take him out. He had the delivery person done. Shake hands, see you later. It is possible. And we used to point to him as an example of this is, yeah. you, you, you don't want to work the hours, your schedule. I'm okay with that. I totally, I don't want you to work that schedule either because that schedule sucks. Be like him. Yeah load in and do what you want to do and and but it takes work it looks easy but it takes work yeah. if you're not willing to do the work then you got to work the hour <laughs> yes yeah yeah so yeah. all right enough ranting sorry i had to get out, get that off my chest I, I just want so much better for our industry as as a business and it's getting there we've made a lot of progress but once in a while you hear about those things that you just go come on I'm tired of reading bad reviews for dealerships and I'm tired of reading fake reviews for dealerships. And um, because um, both of those are in in se separate stories, right? There's there's the bad, and then that you have to hire a company to put fake reviews up. I'm just tired of all of it. I just like just you know, it 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 you honestly, I like as you know. You know, I worked at, at, at with an organization, but in a dealership where we did treat people with respect and we every including all employees uh, and no one was more important. The porter all the way up to the managers were all treated the same and we made more money than I'm telling you anybody any I, I challenge anybody to come at the numbers that we were doing we were number one in sales number one in service number one in parts. Number one in in customer satisfaction. Um, they're all tied together, though. Yes, they're all tied together, and um, I just, you know, that seems like a we did it in the way that you would want to, and I think it in it was su such a great experience, but it ruined me for the rest of my life because I've always right. wanted to have something like that. But it really takes a lot of work and um, a, a cohesive team together uh and and everyone on the same page but um you know we That's did very how many time. companies have cropped up and filled that niche that's called reputation management that charge companies to manage reputation management is really simple do the right thing up front and yeah. earn good reviews yeah. that's reputation management <laughs> yeah what a concept it's real easy yeah what a concept yeah yeah Okay, we're switching gears. It's a, it's a manual shift. We're going to have to hard shift this. <laughs> I didn't have a good segue for it today, so we're just going to grind it in. <laughs> couple 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 bummers, but then we'll follow it up with a, a high point with a birthday. Okay. So last week, uh, this today is May 25th, 2023. So last week we lost uh, a tremendous influence in music, the, the music that you and I, um, that style, that genre, that that part of history. Um, Andy worked with um, multiple bands, but probably best known for his work with the Smiths. Um, passed away last week. Uh, in fact, he passed away the day after we recorded. So we're having to catch up with it now. Huge impact. Um, Andy Rourke. Say, say again, I, did, I didn't hear you say. Andy Rourke mm -hmm. with the Smiths, oh. the bass player from the Smiths. Mm -hmm. um, and And anyone that's that's that I've talked to musically I was a huge Smiths fan not Morrissey I always enjoyed their music not Morrissey and and I know I'm that's an unpopular opinion but if someone asks me what's my favorite Smith song I'm always going to say oscillate wildly which is an instrumental <laughs> because it gives you this the, the the incredibly beautiful music that the Smiths produced without all that incessant whining and it wasn't so many years after the Smiths broke up that I actually read in uh, some magazine, probably Stone or something, but when they were 
making music, you know, um, Johnny Marr and Andy Rourke, they would they would create songs, you know, just the the melody, the music part, and they would put it on a cassette. They would hand it to Stephen J. Morrissey, and he would go to his flat and he would write a song, and he would he would basically fit words to that music that he felt would work. And that's why most of the time when I was listening to Smiths, half of the songs didn't make sense. Just like, the fuck are you even talking about, dude? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Just like, what? <clears throat> but it, it kind of made sense later that, you know, it wasn't all done at once. He was taking a, a, an already made music and, and putting words to it. Their music has always been what I loved about the Smiths and Andy Warwick's loss is just huge. Yeah, you can tell by the way that people were talking about him and his death. He died of, uh, I think it was a uh, cancer. I forget what kind. Yes. And uh, that he'd been dealing with. And but you can always tell a lot about the person when they pass away, and everyone what like so many people said, what a nice guy he was. <clears throat> and his impact in music. You know, you and I always talk about bands that made an impact. You know, there's no question the Smiths left. A footprint on new wave music that just they were a quintessential part of it and even up until the end you know before Dolores Reedon passed she was working with Andy Rourke in a collaboration and making some incredibly beautiful songs you know a lot of people were posting their favorite Smith song well I posted that work that he did with uh, Dolores Reedon because I thought that was just that was amazing in itself and it was you know a chance for the spotlight to be more on him than, you know, Morrissey Hogg and the light. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. And then um, yesterday, uh, we lost another monumental force in music that, I mean, my God, Tina Turner passed away yesterday. That was, that was pretty massive. That's huge. Yeah. You know, she, there's, I mean, God, the, when you talk about impact on an industry, on on culture on pop on everything yeah and it was huge yeah 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 i loved how people were sharing a lot of uh like kind of obscure videos but she was on uh, saturday night live in like the 90s and it was really really awesome yeah it was proud mary that she sang and <clears throat> did it on <laughs> pardon me i've got allergies bad today um but in the small small little you know studio h that they play in and uh, she was as big as the stage it was great but yeah definitely i saw just this morning it. someone shared that um her and elton john um were yeah. doing a show together and she stopped him three times to correct him on you know there was something she didn't like in the way he was the key he was hitting you know, and she's got a full band behind her and all this stuff going on. And she still was like, mm, just, mm, it wasn't right for her. And you're thinking, okay, you know, it's her song, it's her music. It, she has all the right in the world to say how it's done. But then you remember, she's talking to Elton freaking John. She's not talking to a hired pianist, you know, that that's just the studio guy there. She's, she's correcting Elton John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. She was the expert at singing Proud Mary, so, you know, hopefully he can just back off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what else is going on in music? Share something positive. We lost two greats, but... Oh, it's, uh, it's Paul Weller's birthday today. Yay! And Paul Weller is the well-known lead singer and founder of The Jam, a, a three-person rock group shall we say i don't want to say they, they were um they've started a movement honestly of um in england and um and i mean he's he's there's no i can't i can't even have a word for him but he's just an icon in my world and of course mike won't <clears throat> mention I was actually going to say, and then he continued the evolution yeah, after, he, yes, and he did like some all great artists, stuff. Like all great artists, and I, when I say great artists, ones that are, get bored quickly uh, about, you know, if because there's a great documentary about Style Council. It's called Long Hot Summer, and 
I can so relate to him. He talks about like nobody, they, he disbanded the jam at the height of their, their popularity because they were number one in England and he just got tired of it. And he just got tired of being the angry, the angry person that he was with that music and wanted to do something different. And he did it. And I, I have a lot of respect for that dude for sure. So, um, but the style council is also one of my favorite bands too. And it was just him and this guy, Mick, but then later this gal, DC Lee joined up and uh, their drummer, Steve, I think Steve White is his name, um, begged to be uh, on Style Council and turned into this amazing, amazing band. So, and Paul Weller is still a new, a new respect for the Style Council through your perspective. You've helped me look at it differently because I always looked at it as he took away something great. So yeah. I, I resisted even listening to the Style Council because the first, you know, the first few bars of it it's different than the jam was so mm -hmm. i just turned it off i never gave it a chance by my own admission that was short-sighted but like i said the reason was he took away something great and it was almost you know like what the hell so understanding his his mental place of you know wanting to move from that angst into something different and looking you know everybody's allowed to mature and grow and evolve and right. become right. something differently and then who am i to say that shouldn't it wasn't have his it didn't wasn't a choice for him he just had to do it it's the same concept as when jerry seinfeld just they decided to go out on top and and that was it and he just wanted to do something else and so he did and, and you're alone. a huge amount of courage for for someone to do because when you're at the top you're making all the money and you just but yeah paul weller is is very uh, he has a lot of integrity and uh, he honors, you know, the, the things that he feels like he needs to honor. And that's not a common thing. So, yeah. And he's still touring. He just, I just saw on Instagram that they finished a tour. They only, <laughs> they don't, he doesn't come here very often. As you can imagine, he's not much of a fan of America, but, uh, but that's okay. Um, they're, they toured around in, um, in in britain and but i think they went a couple of places in europe too so so happy birthday happy Paula. birthday paul Weller. yeah and also happy birthday to not a person but an album that was heavily influential to me as a as a as a lad on may 25th 1983 dio's first album under the name dio holy diver was released oh yes okay yes we have to mention that. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm gonna throw in some one more birthday is uh uh Mike's birthday is this Sunday. Yes, ma'am. Gonna be 54 years old if you can believe that. Uh, hey. <laughs> and that this weekend is the 40th anniversary of the greatest concert of all time, known to man, us two, 1983. Yeah. And this year it follows it's in the same. True the same order <laughs> it was saturday through monday oh my birthday yeah. was on sunday that year oh. so my birthday was on heavy metal sunday but i was there for new wave saturday heavy oh. metal sunday and then rock and roll greats on monday so oh. it's in the very same nice. order this year as it was my birthday very nice yeah very nice so are you doing anything special for your birthday probably not yeah, just take it. Got to move uh, Anthony out of his dorm this weekend. So that's moving him uh, out. Oh, yeah, because it's it's in a school. End year. of semester. Yeah. Yeah. End yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll be coming home for the summer. Okay. There goes the gr the uh, grocery bill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 Got to readjust to feeding a six one, 320 pound lineman. <laughs> yeah, boy. All right, let's wrap it up. Uh, say thank you to everyone that's listened in. We very, very much appreciate it. We're over a thousand downloads and it's just pretty cool that other people have found our conversations as interesting as I find them. I look forward to them every single week. Um, always fun to catch up with my best friend and it's cool that other people have listened in and, and had some good feedback. If you do have some feedback, we want to hear it. Uh, we may even want to have you on the show with us. Uh, we've got some guests coming up here in the next couple of weeks that are going to be completely awesome, mind-blowing stuff. But uh, we've got room for more. So if you're in automotive, we want to hear from you. If you don't want to be on the show, uh, that's okay. Just give us some topics that you'd like us to discuss or, or delve into and, and maybe help you figure things out 
We're, yeah. we're all about help. My friend Jocelyn uh, isn't in the car business, but she wanted us to talk more about, you know, what it's what it's like to buy a car and how awful it is, <laughs> which we kind of did today. But yeah, and just she said tips for people to uh, when so when they go to buy a car and that's that's a whole discussion we could have. Yeah, we could do that. We could we could definitely do that because that's there's it's scary for people and and it can be your so. car buying buddies otherwise you're, you're going to get lied to like that dude that lied about the extended warranty and the interest rate so it's unfortunate but you know you, if you're not in the car business you can always reach out to us if you're buying a car and we will be happy to help you in whatever way we can yep <laughs> we're your so, car buying buddies yep yep all right so we're signing off then huh okay <laughs> well it was right, fun that's how it goes. good week and um everyone have a good week and uh we will see you soon bye for now <laughs>